Recently in the news, there have been a lot of talks of the Tie the Tasmanian Tiger series getting a fourth game, with Tie the Tasmanian Tiger 4 coming this September on Steam. In reality, this is a port of a game released on Windows 8 that came out in 2013. It was developed by Chrome Studios, who also made the original games, and it was their attempt to bring Ty back to the current generation of games, as the last game was Knight of the Quincun, which was released in 2005. Chrome Studios now function as a much smaller team than they did back then, due to the major downsizing the company went through back in 2010. After this happened, they have been attempting to make some sort of a comeback, with most of it being focused on reviving Ty the Tasmanian Tiger without the financial backing they once had. The first attempt was an iOS game called Tie the Tasmanian Tiger Boomerang Blast back in 2012. I haven't played it, but I believe it's a simple target practice game where you tap the screen to destroy targets with boomerangs. The next attempt was the Windows 8 game previously mentioned. The most recent attempt is releasing Tie the Tasmanian Tiger 4 on Steam, but it's actually the Windows 8 game, which at the time was just called Tie the Tasmanian Tiger, with the 4 only being added for this Steam release. According to the Chrome Studios Twitter and Facebook pages, they have stated that if the TIE 4 Steam release goes well, then they will look into porting the original TIE trilogy into HD. So, if you would like to see this happen, then be sure to purchase TIE 4 on Steam, I guess. Their Twitter also confirms that the Steam release will not have any differences from the Windows one, so I've decided to review the Windows one to see if it's any good. So, does this game do enough to earn the newly assigned 4 at the end of its name, or was this a wasted attempt to bring back the franchise? Let's see. The game picks up after the events of TIE 3, where the Quinkins are no longer around and everything is back to normal for the magical world of Australia. You play as TIE as he completes tasks as part of the bush rescue, with the first task being to save an orphanage from a museum sliding down a hill. While completing more of these random tasks for the bush rescue, characters such as Sly, who were villains but are now allies, start turning evil again. After beating them, you find out that they were robots created by Boss Cass, who once again has turned evil. So you set out to beat Boss Cass. I can't decide whether I find the story admirable or pointless. If you want a full story that takes the TIE series back to the same tone as the original game, then the plot serves its purpose. However, there's no voice acting or cutscenes, so you have to read the entire game's story through character dialogue. It's nice that they took the time to include all the previous characters in the series and try to inject the same type of humour as the other games, but the presentation doesn't match the story they wanted to tell. Less would have been more here, instead of having a large amount of speech thrown at the player, instead they could have had story events happen in-game, so you're not just reading it. You're only ever going to get sucked into a story that's about Ty and his animal friends, but I found it completely impossible to get sucked into the story of the game, especially because I was just reading it. Ty the Tasmanian Tiger changes dimensions for the series by being entirely in 2D. It's still very much a Ty game though, as it's a platformer, you use boomerangs to kill enemies, and you collect different types of trinkets hidden in levels. The vehicles, the open world and melee combat though have been removed, so it's most like the original TIE game in terms of gameplay and tone. I feel like the most important part of a platformer is the controls, and sadly TIE does not control well. First of all, it's hard to be precise with your jumps. You have a decently high jump, but it can be tricky to position yourself properly when falling from a jump. When you push the stick left and right, Ty will always move left and right a set amount, no matter how hard you push the stick. So if there's a specific spot you wish to land, you have to keep moving left and right to try and align yourself properly. Now, for the sake of transparency, I was using an Xbox 360 controller, so it might have been causing the issues, but the game does officially support it, so I doubt it. There were also times when I tried to land on these platforms that rotate around a point, but the physics of them would cause me to slide off or just unfairly miss them. These problems don't break the game as the amount of precise platforming is minimal, but it stops the game from having a proper flow to it. With 2D platformers, you want it to feel good to play by either having strict core mechanics or satisfying movement. TIE doesn't have either, instead it feels awkward to control. It's playable, but awkward. Levels are generally linear, but you will have multiple areas and paths to check out. Your objective for the majority of levels is to explore until you find a set number of torches, generators, tourists, etc, and either set them alight, turn them back on, or rescue them. After completing the task, you head to the end of the level to move on to the next one. With almost every level having this structure, it wears thin before the end of the game. 
You have your different abilities such as being able to bite and being able to glide, but they don't add much to the actual gameplay. Even the boomerang power-ups aren't interesting. Like the original Thai game, each boomerang has one function, so you have to switch between them depending on what the level requires. Unfortunately, the boomerang abilities aren't used in any sort of original way. There's the flame rang that sets things on fire, so guess what, you have to use it to light torches. There's a plasma rang that has electricity flowing through it, so guess what, you have to use it to power generators. There's the ice rang that you may think you have to use it to create ice platforms on top of water, but actually you mostly use it to put out fires, so it's just the anti-flame rang. The applications of the boomerangs are so generic that you could replace them with Mario power-ups and the gameplay wouldn't change at all. There are additional boomerangs you can buy outside of the elemental ones, but they're all optional and useless. Most enemies can be killed with only one hit of the elemental boomerangs, and for the ones that don't, you just use your charged up attack. The one new addition to Ty's arsenal is the charged attack, where you hold down the attack button, wait for Ty to charge, and then fire a power up boomerang, which is the main method of taking out tougher enemies. Using this attack is annoying, as you have to wait to charge it every time, and if you don't position yourself correctly, you will flat out miss, and similar to the controls, it just feels awkward. A platformer doesn't flow well when you have to stop regularly to charge up an attack. My main frustration here is that there's nothing about the gameplay that makes it stand out. The only thing that's unique is the fact that it's a tie game and nothing more. The best part about this game for me is the graphics. As the gameplay is now in 2D, so are the graphics, which gives the game a very different look. It's great to look at though, as everything is highly detailed but still retains a cartoony feel. The problem with all this though is that the animations are too basic, which drains some of the personality from the world. When a character walks, their arms and legs move in a robotic way, and there's little variety to movement, and it makes it less visually interesting. It's a shame too, because the environments do stand out, but it doesn't mean that much in the end when nothing moves in a unique way, and it sucks the soul out of the areas you visit. The last thing I need to mention in the game is the unlockables. Well, I could mention the time trials, but it's a little pointless. There are separate challenges where you have to run through rings to see how quickly you can do it. That's about it. You don't get anything for doing them, and there's nothing about the game's control or design that lends itself to finding new and quicker ways to beat levels. Like I said, pointless. So the unlockables. Opals are still the currency of the game, and when you have enough, you can purchase new boomerangs. If you don't feel like collecting opals, you can use real money to buy them instead. I don't hate microtransactions, so I don't really mind this. What I do mind though is that if you want to buy new skins, such as playing as Sly, you have to pay real money and there's no in-game alternative to unlocking them. Now, you can argue that these are DLC costumes, but this is a tie game, so DLC costumes feel weird. In Little Big Planet, there are hundreds of different costumes, with most of them being based on other franchises, so it's fair enough that they would be paid DLC. But here, it's only other Thai characters, the story isn't updated or that full, and there's no online multiplayer to show off your costumes, so having to spend real money on these feels greedy. Thai the Tasmanian Tiger for Windows is not what the franchise needed. It doesn't show any real understanding of what makes a 2D platformer fun, and it doesn't do anything new. Thanks to the controls and combat, it isn't even good at being cliched. I like the graphics, but they don't start the game from feeling like a high budget flash game rather than a well made indie platformer. I don't hate it despite my complaints, as it's playable and you could have a decent afternoon playing all the way through it, but that's the best you can hope for. If you want to support Chrome Studios and the TIE series, I still say buy it, but if you want a great reboot of an old platforming franchise, stick with Rayman Origins and Legends. My score is 3.5 out of 10. It's a game that solely relies on nostalgia of its successors, and it's not a true sequel to the original TIE trilogy.